Hi Stitchers! Welcome back to my second video. This is Nancy from Notly Stitchy's Corner and you can see why it's Stitchy Corner because I'm sitting in the corner of my couch. That's where I stitch um, and I'll do probably a separate Stitchy Spot tag because I want to combine it with a video of me stitching um, in hand using the sewing method. and. Um, I don't know if there's many stitchers out there who um, stitch with a sewing method, um, and I would love to see your videos if you're if you wanted to shoot one yourself. You know, whether you stitch in hand or with a hoop or a Q snap or in a frame or anything. Um, I think it's very interesting to see you know how people actually move their needles around and uh, all the little movements they make with their hands. So um, I'll do that another time. And then just to talk about my um, username, I guess, for, for a minute, uh, Nortley is a very old username I've had for over 10 years now. And um, actually way more than 10 years. Um, when I was in high school, I read a book called Smilla's Sense of Snow. It's been made into a movie. And... Um, they used the Norwegian, I think it's Norwegian, definitely Scandinavian word for northern light in there and that was the word Nordly set, which I'm totally, you know, pronouncing the wrong way. Anyway, so I thought it was a really cool word. I also love the northern lights. It's one of the things that I want to see um, in person if I ever get a chance to. And uh, so I adopted that, you know, for MSN and ICQ back in the days and I've used it ever since. Sometimes when I sign up for a new service and I try to use my, you know, standard Nordly or Nordly set username and it's taken, I just find myself getting a little bit upset because I really don't know what other username to pick now because, you know, that's the one I use. Anyway, so today what I want to do is to show you some of my finishes and the very first one is my Nyan Cat. Here it is. You might recognize this from my intro video. I stitched this one uh, about two years ago, just about the first year I started stitching. And um, I love cats, like most, well I wouldn't say most people, but I definitely love cats. And I like rainbows and um, I love the internet and I love the, you know, the cat videos that are out there. And um, so I was very happy stitching this, although to be fair, um, this was the first time I stitched on black, well not black, but dark fabric. This is dark blue. It's 14 count dark blue Ada. Um, this is the first time stitching on dark fabric and I hated it. I, like a lot of you, as soon as you start stitching on dark fabric, unless you are one of the lucky people who get to stitch right next to a big window with lots of natural light, it is a pain. Um, so I, I, I finished it, but I told myself I would never stitch on dark fabric again. It's totally not worth it. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's totally showing all the cat hair that floats around this place. And, you know, all the air filters in the world can't remove all the cat hair from the air. Anyways, when I told my boyfriend Andrew that I wanted to make um, little intro shot for my videos and I wanted to use this he went crazy he is an animator so he thought it would be amazing you know it wasn't just enough for him just to take a still photo and put it in there with some text over it he went he wanted to make all the rainbows move so that it looked as if the cat was actually running through space instead of being just a cross stitch piece and that's why in my intro video you can see my cross stitch piece actually running through space which is really amazing. It makes me really happy when I look at it. So, babe, thank you. All right, so the other piece I wanted to show you is a collection of designs from Tiny Modernist on Etsy. She is a designer from Toronto. I live in Toronto as well, so I feel this little, you know, kinship with her, I guess. Anyways, um, she um, designed a series, not really a series because they were all individual patterns, but she designed a bunch of modern, not modern, not really, but uh, designer chairs. And uh, for some reason, I really love designer furniture. 
um, I think they look beautiful and I love you know the stories behind it and what it represents and what I don't love is the price they're very expensive and I would never own a piece like that or you know really be willing to pay the hundreds or thousands of dollars for one piece of furniture but I do really like looking at it and so when I saw these patterns I was totally stoked and I wanted to stitch them all I bought about eight maybe ten different um, patterns from her and so far I've stitched a few so I'll show you those so the first one here is the Eames shell chair uh, you might recognize this one I call it the Eiffel Tower ch chair because the legs look like the Eiffel Tower to me and um, there's you might see this one in lots of um, you know uh, design or home decorating magazines uh, I did add the lettering at the bottom myself. That wasn't part of the pattern. Uh, I just thought it would be nice to be able to identify the chairs, especially for people who visit my place and don't really know, you know, what these chairs are. And this was my first time stitching with fractional stitches. This is done on Ada. And um, if I knew about it, I probably would have got an even weave because it was a little bit of a pain trying to pierce the Ada fabric. Not too bad though, uh, it was it was doable. Um, and I have to say, the fractional sp stitches and the back stitching you see here, just, you know, they, they, they make the design. You can't have that level of detail in such a tiny piece. I think this is like maybe not even three inches tall uh, without using fractional stitches. And I have to say, her uh, the Tiny Modernist, her patterns are really well written. Um, they're not, they're, you know, I mean, so they're not big designs, so everything fits onto a double-sided uh, sheet of a uh, letter sheet, and um, she's laid it out so that you can practice. You can actually just fold it up like a little booklet. I'll show you one of them, but obviously without showing you the actual pattern. So, for instance, here, this is one of the patterns. As you can see, the front is just an image of the um, finish. Um, design this one actually actually this one is actually just a picture from the software but the most of the other ones I got actually have the image of the stitch chair so let me just I'm just reaching over and grabbing another one actually I'm gonna fold them because I printed it out and it didn't fold it but they can be folded like this so this is the Eiffel Tower chair we just saw as you can see um, it's a picture of the actual design so you can see what it really looks like. She has all the information on it, uh, the size and what count you should be using. And then in, on the back side, it gives you the, you know, like how to start and end and what to, how to do a, a quarter stitch or three quarter stitch. So all that information is on your pattern. And on the inside, which I'm not going to show you, it is a really good, you know, nice computer generated chart um, with all the colors. She actually color codes her um, um, her design instead of using symbols so it's actually really easy to see wh which one you have to stitch um, and then um, she uses a different color to go over the back to, to denote the back stitching um, so that you can clearly see what's happening um, so what I really appreciate about it is that um, in all the different designs she has for the different chairs she tries to reuse the same colors as much as possible. So, you know, if there's uh, browns being reused and reds and grays and, and things like that, um, she'll, she'll tend to stick with the same browns, the same colors, so you don't, you're not going out there buying a whole skein of, um, you know, brown just to use it for a few stitches and not to use it again in another uh, design. So that's good. I'll show you some of the other ones I finished. Um, by the way, I wanted to finish them in little hoops so that I can um, just hang them up in a group. So this is the Frank Gehry's Wiggle Chair. If you're not familiar with this, I would suggest looking it up. It's a really cool chair. It's made entirely out of corrugated cardboard. Uh, I've seen it in person. It, it just looks amazing. I don't know how comfortable it would be to sit on, but you know, it's just an amazing piece of uh, design. And I'll just quickly flip to the back. Uh, my boyfriend Andrew finished these for me. He trimmed and glued it down in the back and they look pretty neat. Way better than I could do myself. So the last one that's in the hoop is the Ann Jacobson, 
Ann Jacobson egg chair. I hope you can see this. This one hasn't been trimmed yet. We are still a work in progress. Okay, so I have two more. One that is done. Uh, this is the Eames LCW, which stands for Low Chair Wood. It's a little funny chair because it's kind of, it's really small. It looks as if a chair for a toddler. And it has this very distinctive, like, tubby legs and, like, curved seat. You know, it's a, it's a, I like it. I like it a lot. And then there is the Bertoa Bert Chair which I haven't quite finished yet because um, the lettering, I've stitched it twice already and every single time it was off one stitch from the exact center and it drives me crazy when I can see it's not entirely correct so I ripped it out and I'm just sick of doing the letters again so I'm just putting that in the naughty pile for now all right and then just a quick one this is one that i was working on this is the barcelona chair and this still needs the back stitching and you can see that you know the design is not much to look at at this point but once you put the back stitching in there it really just pops to be honest though i do not like doing back stitching i mean i'll, I'll do it when i have to but um, after these, I probably wouldn't pick a design again if it had a lot of backstitching in it because to me, it's really not worth all that time. Okay, so um, another favorite designer of mine is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And most of you know about them by now. Um, I learned... I learned... Um, I learned of their existence back in, I believe, probably 2012. Uh, late 2012 when they released their woodland sampler or maybe it was it 2013 I can't remember now anyways they released the woodland sampler and I thought it was an adorable pattern and I went out and I bought the materials I started it um, still haven't finished it yet so that's one for the whip pile and in my whip video we'll talk about it but I did finish their 12 days of Christmas I signed up right away when they announced it on their Facebook page because I do love Christmas and especially Christmas songs. Um, it's what, October 22nd now? And I've been listening to Christmas music for at least a week. Um, this is kind of late because normally I like to start listening to Christmas music in September but it was a little bit busy and I didn't really, wasn't really in the mood but now I'm in full blown Christmas mood already. So I stitched it on the... 14 count Ada, the one with the gold threads woven in. And this is something I got from Michaels with a 40% off coupon. Um, I had a lot of fun stitching this piece. Every little block was just, you know, it was just like, oh, I wonder how they're gonna, uh, how they're gonna represent this particular um, um, line of the song. And um, I'm very happy with it, especially my favorites are the Mates of Milking. Um, the drummer's drumming and the uh, dancers dancing and what's it called the um, the pipers piping and everything on the bottom actually everything on the bottom row is a favorite block. Uh, I changed the colors around a little bit. I um, changed the border color and the color of the letters. Sorry, the numbers, but that's about it. And all in all, it was a pretty easy stitch, and I think I finished it in time for. Um, the holidays although I haven't displayed it yet um, not even last year because I plan to wrap it around a piece of canvas um, and I still haven't done it yeah so one day I'll get around to buying a 9 by 9 piece of canvas and and frame it up that way so before this piece started on Facebook or you know before this um, mystery started they were doing their Halloween spooky sampler and um, I saw the pictures when they released it, and I was like, yeah, okay, it's nice, but no, not really, you know, my thing. And then I was following their Facebook group, and then someone posted a picture of it done on black fabric with a white border. And it was something about those white skulls on black fabric that just totally stole my heart, and I was like, shut up and take my money. So I, I, bought the, I bought the chart, I bought the materials right away, you know, black fabric, you know, never going to do it again, whatever, I, I, was, I was sold. 
and I started stitching on it right away. Still hated stitching on black because it's a nightmare. Although, as you all know now, if you put a little bit of like a white fabric or um, a piece of white paper underneath it, it does help a lot. So, um, unfortunately, I didn't manage to finish it last year, so I put it away and I only finished it maybe a few weeks ago. And here is my spooky Halloween sampler. I'm super proud of this piece. And again, the white border just pops when you look at it. I changed the letters um, to a variegated orange from DMC, which I love. It just adds that little bit of extra. Uh, for the rest, it's pretty much the same. Um, I gave the witch little red shoes. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, red shoes because, you know, everyone likes red shoes. And I just love how the ninja is barely there on that dark gray. Uh, you can kind of make it out, but not very much. So definitely one of my favorite pieces. And um, again, I really should go out and get a 9x9 piece of canvas so I can frame it and put it up for Halloween. Uh, one thing I do want to say though about the frosted pumpkin patterns, actually two things, actually three things. First of all, they have amazing charts. If you've never purchased one of their patterns before, they have charts in black and white with the symbols, which are very easy to distinguish from each other. But they also have charts in uh, color with the same symbol, but with a color on top of it so that you can easily see what the design is supposed to look like. Uh, and then they also have um, charts where the entire piece is uh, laid out on one page so you can quickly see whether your um, border lines and things like that are you know correct and then they also have it uh, broken over multiple pages so that you can um, you know so that each row is blown up more and you can easily see the design that you need to stitch so they have that for both black and white and the color chart so that's amazing they also provide the um, colors for uh, DMC as well as Cosmos, Cosmo Floss um, and then any uh, specialty, usually weeks dye work floss that they uh, recommend. Um, what I don't really like is more something to do with me. Um, the borders for the, these really beautiful intricate borders for the Halloween and um, 12 days of Christmas they're, they're not really intuitive to stitch. I mean, I mean, I have to look at the chart constantly to make sure I don't make a mistake. And now I look at it from, you know, from, from a distance and at a whole, I can see that, oh yeah, this is a bat, it's a spider, and, and you know, there's a little squiggly here, and then it repeats itself on the other side. But while I'm stitching it, I, I don't see it. It's not like a geometric pattern where I can anticipate where the next stitch goes or when I can quickly tell whether I made a mistake. So there was quite a bit of ripping out um, for the border, but in the end it is really worth it and I, I just love the borders. The last thing I want to mention, um, I don't know if this is just me because I've never heard anyone mention this. Um, they're, when they provide you the list of colors, they have it on a beautiful, beautifully laid out page where um, each color is in like a little half circle bubble and they group it by the color group. So all the greens are together and then all the browns and the blues and so on. Um, but they're not sorted in the color number order. So when I print it out and I go to the store and I, you know, stand in front of the little floss uh, bins and I try to, you know, pick out all my floss, I'm constantly hunting around for the, for the proper bin because they're not in numerical order. And it's not as if they have a lot of um, colors in their designs, maybe, what, 15, 20 or so. So it's not a big hassle. Like, I mean, it's not I'm standing there for an hour or something, but... I guess the OCD in me wants to have it in a numerical order. And if you, if, you know, if I for some reason missed it and there is a page or a section on their chart where they say these are your DMC colors in order, please let me know because I swear I looked all over the place and I couldn't find it. Um, and maybe, maybe I should probably just email them and, and, and see if they, you know, it's a suggestion or something instead of complaining about it. 
anyways so those are my frosted pumpkin citry um, finishes so far um, I only have one more finish to show you and this is a big piece um, it took me about from January to about the end of September this year to finish this I didn't work on it exclusively but it did take up a big chunk of my time and that's a pattern a Chinese pattern a kit that my sister brought back from China so this is it in its entirety I hope let me see I'm gonna have to play around with it I'm not really sure at what point you can see the whole design but anyways it's one of those um, printed cross stitch kits that you can purchase online um, she bought it while she was in China but you know they're the ones where all the weird different colors printed on it and then you just basically stitch over those colors and when you're done you throw it in some in your bathtub wash out all the dye and then you're good to go um, it was a very easy stitch because even though it had like a massive little booklet with all the chart clearly laid out in it I never had to refer to it all I had to do was look at the right color on the uh, the printer color find my floss number and stitch away it was the easiest no-brainer cross stitching of all time um, that was great when you know I want to watch a movie or watch TV and I don't want to pay too much attention but this huge red letter in the middle I saved it for the last because you know I didn't really want to do it it took forever oh my god it felt as if this thing was never gonna end and um, I had to be extra careful with the red because um, this is on 11 count three strands um, I had to be extra careful because I want I wanted to make sure that all the strands lay really flat next to each other and that you know it wouldn't because any sort of uh, bumpiness or tangles or unevenness would show up so easily in the middle of this huge red letter um, I'm not really sure despite being Chinese I'm not really sure what all the words say because I can't read Chinese but I've been assured by people who can that these are really good words and sayings um, this piece is for uh, my grandparents it's their 70th wedding anniversary this year that's right 7-0 they got married when they were 18 and they're still together after all these years um, so this is a gift from all the grandkids to our grandparents um, I did all the stitching um, we're gonna get it framed and all my siblings and cousins uh, we're all gonna chip in for the framing and this is gonna be our anniversary slash Christmas present to our grandparents this year very stoked for that um, not you know and not just because um, for the happy occasion of course but also we're done for Christmas presents I don't know about you guys but it is really hard finding Christmas presents for older people especially grandparents who you know they already have everything they need uh, they don't need more clothes they can't really eat all the kind of food like you know the the um, the rich indulgy kind of food that you want to buy for them because you know they have some health problems and restrictive diets um, there's really not that many activity activities you can um, uh, take them to or purchase tickets for them so uh, we're pretty happy to uh, have this done and uh, give it to them and I know that they will be extremely happy to receive this and uh, my grandma will probably have to clear some space on her wall because their place is full of things already uh, but they'll happily do that uh, one thing I want to note though for someone who is also stitching one of these uh, Chinese um, printed cross stitch pieces all the ink does come out I was I was still a little bit I was a little bit worried until it was finally done it will it will run and, and your your water will be very very you know like uh, what's it called it will run with all the ink but just keep on rinsing and keep on you know keep on bringing more water in it and it will eventually all come out the floss does not run I'm not really sure if the floss is real DMC or not for the longest time I thought it was because they had color numbers uh, DMC color numbers and they felt pretty soft and they looked DMC to me um, until I saw a video by someone else who is also doing something like this and she said that 
she doesn't think they're the MC because when she she's a she's a thread licker and when she licks her regular DMC thread because it's cotton the threads would stick together whereas with this uh, Chinese floss it wouldn't so she thinks there's some like a uh, synthetic component in it she might be right because these kits are dirt cheap they give you tons of floss and um, yeah oh another thing you have to also keep in mind is it shrank about, I think I would say it shrank at least 10% in the width and probably closer to 15% in the height. This was uh, 40 by 20 inches when I started it. And I mean, like just the design itself, not including the uh, selvage, the edges. Um, and after washing it, it shrank to 36 by 15 and a half. Just so, just so you keep in mind, um, Originally, I brought it to the framers before I was finished, before I washed it, and I asked them for a quote, and I was even contemplating having um, them order the mats in advance because it sometimes takes you know, a few weeks or months to get it in, especially with large sizes, and I'm glad I didn't because I would have been stuck with a mat that was too big for the design, so that would have been a disaster. Anyway, so that's my uh, finishes video for now. Oh my god, no, I forgot one. I forgot my most important finish, the one that I'm most proud of of all the finishes I've done. 